<clears throat> Today is August 21st, 23. Yesterday. Again. Um, I had went to Trinity Gospel Temple. Some women follow out after me. She's some kind of nurse. And the lady said, she's in here taking, you know, I take care of my client. And, um, she said, uh, are you sure they opened a real case? And she's like, yeah, they opened a real case. She said, Will's telling everybody not to believe her. And they walk off talking. She said, I, you know, they were talking about things. Okay. Take my client. Okay. I go to my other job. We go to Outback Steakhouse. We had a lady in there. And um, they said, we're tired of this. Okay. Um, we know the sheriffs and marshals used that case to get 800 people. Or get all those people. We know they used her case. Those agents need to go to jail for obstruction to justice. At the least. Okay. Take my client over to Walmart on the strip. Some girls are walking around me. Those idiots admitted it on a recorded line they were already in contact with them. They did. Okay. Some other guy walks by. And he's on the phone. Strange lied that she was faking she was sick. Strange lied. I told these people to stay out of it. Okay. Take her to the different part of the store. Another guy is there. They were in contact with all of them before they talked to her. It is what's going on and no one's ever say a word to her. They weren't, and then they fell for it. Oh, and then they made fun of it in, for, or in public and then sold videos of it. You want to go there? June 7th, 23, Walmart 62 by the front bathroom. Lighthouse Tabernacle mocking FBI agent John, how they fooled him. Calling him out by name, screaming his name, cackling like jackasses. No, we're going to come down to this. How could he fall for it? They're crackhead tapes. They're peeking Tom crackhead tapes. That's where in that one video, it's like you couldn't even say a word without being arrested. Mr. FBI agent, we got some gnarly peeking Tom tapes. You want to see some free porn? Her and Dave going at me. Me and the drug guys went over, got some fake sodium pentothal reports. We actually have an issue date rape drug her. Told her to say a bunch of stuff. She don't know what happened to her. And then we let some of the guy, you want to see a real rape Mr. FBI agent? Let some of the drug guys drug beat and rape her. She don't know what happened to her, and she's just got bruises, she's throwing up, she's infected, even the doctor's not figuring it out. What's wrong with her? Or would you rather watch little kids go potty? We got candy porn. We even played, we uh, we watched uh, her in the shower, using the bathroom, we, we played around with some of the tapes, and we photoshopped her shower scene in the other room. We drugged her up and told her to say crazy stuff. You want to see how amnesia drugs people are walk sleepwalking? He ain't the only bastard on the desk. It was done by crackheads. It's a new kind of drug scam. Where they think that you don't have the right to be safe in your own home. That we don't have a constitution. Okay? That anybody can break in your home and stalk you. You don't have any rights. They can break in your home, stab you with a date rape drug, you're sleepwalking, tell you say something stupid, worse, beat and rape you. you wake up infected, throwing up, and you go to the doctor, it's like, what's wrong with me? Because you have no memory. Because they've chemically made you sleepwalk for hours. And they, they could extort money out of you. It's a new kind of extortion scheme. New kind of human trafficking scheme. They can human traffic people in their own homes under drugs. And then run sextortion schemes. 
that they can violate people in their homes and they're not even safe within their own home. See, that's where it's so ridiculous. I googled what would the tapes be called if you set up by cameras watching somebody in their home. Not only stalking, but peeking and tom tapes. You automatically get listed as a sex offender and you go to jail. Hmm? And he didn't yell the pastor to the desk. Is peeking tom tapes, crackhead tapes, admissible or even trustworthy? So how did they fall for it? We're June 7th, 23, Walmart, 62, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. FBI agent John actually fell for the stunt on tapes before. Oh, come on now. That agent actually fell for that? It was only a stunt. It was a satanic stunt. That occult hiring those human traffickers to do that to me. You mean John actually fell for it? FBI agent John actually fell for stunt on tapes before? You're kidding. Is that what's going on? FBI agent John fell for the stun of tapes before. Ha 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 ha. Mock camera Walmart 62. June 7th, 23. 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Lighthouse Tabernacle. Jody and her friends, Katie's sister, are in there mocking the FBI. They had already confessed over the last few years. So they drugged me and told me to say stuff. And they photoshopped that shower scene. More than 10 people went to the police. And the police have documented it being in so-called protected custody. <sighs> that, uh, they documented everything. See, that's where that a those two agents on a recorded line where he had already went up to that church at Apostolic Church of Barberton and was verified by officers. It was the agent that called me back before I returned his phone call. Was at that church and where Pamer yelled at Dave, my God, I had an FBI agent in my office is right there. It was the agent that called me back. Left his voice, Molly kept me drugged up for a couple of days for, um, I, so I couldn't call him back. So you, yeah. He was the one up there. Dave told Danny to talk to him. Okay. And he told Apostolic Church of Barberton, I told you while Pamer's yelling at Dave, I walk off. Uh, ladies come up. He knows she's being drugged, beat, and raped. He said he didn't care. And I have bruises. I've lost 18 pounds. I haven't been infected. Been throwing up dizzy, massive heart. Uh, well, heart racing, massive headache, not knowing what's wrong with me, going to Altman Family Physicians. They're putting me on iron pills, trying to, uh, thinking I'm anemic, because I got all these bruises here, I'm being drug beat and raped in my own home. Okay? I'm trying to treat the symptoms of not knowing what happened to me. I go and sit down, they come in, they say it again, said, if she was going to be fucking she and fancy things that well. While that family was grieving, he said he didn't care what they did to her. He was going to turn her back over to him. And Dave come and let's go. And I thought, what a mean life. No, that's exactly what he did. Turned me right back over to the infidels. And stole the money. Money that's set up for people that are willing to get them information on people. They risk their life. They support them the rest of their life. They hide them, they insurance cards, living expenses, and they take care of them. And then they put them in immunity so they can't go back and get them like them. <sighs> See, then the next, I told you, Dave came in, let's go, and then threatens my life on the way home. Next day, I have to call that agent. I told him about the guy that threatened to knife me. Call me a liar. He said, was there a camera above the bench? I said, well, he tried to kidnap me before. He described him. You liar, was there a camera above the bench? Terry seen him. You know what's amazing? He's a known serial killer in this area. The description alone should have clicked. Hmm? Like my house manager, Merlisa. They took her niece. The authorities already knew what he looked like. So what the fucking hell? And then, was there a camera above the bench? 
I don't know. You either say you're lying or I'll put you in jail. I'm like, what? He said, I'll put you in jail if you don't say you're lying. Start blowing me in a false statement. It's like, fine, whatever. You say that, blah, blah, blah. And start yelling at me. He's like, now why would the FBI help a person like you? Well, they're trying to kill me, so. They've tried to kill me, so. Give me a real reason. Some guy yells out, well, we could always use Pete's tape of weird with yourself. And the guy starts giggling. Stop. She doesn't know. I went, what's going on? He yells out about something about Pete again. And it's echoing into the phone. I said, what are you talking about? He starts giggling. Stop. She doesn't know. Then he lists me with money, immunity for life, even when you tell. And then threaten me if I told. See, I have a friend that used to work at the Stark County Prosecutor's Office. I told him how he talked to me. Start giggling. Had tears. He said, for one thing, the police know they can't go along with any of that. He said, he can't bully you into false statements. It's badgering. It's obstruction, justice, tampering with evidence, and tampering with witnesses. You automatically go to jail. How stupid was he doing that on a recorder line? Okay. <clears throat> And he said, and as far as him telling you can't tell anybody, he doesn't have that kind of authority. He's higher law enforcement. It takes a sitting judge to take your freedom of speech away. In any witness protection program, you can tell whoever you want. And they can't say a word. I said, well, they already knew. I don't care. He said, it takes a sitting judge to put a gag order on you for the freedom of speech. And then if you look it up, they can only do it during like a sequestered jury and a grand jury. Till the trial's over. Because we live in the United States of America. Like he said, he was only bullying you to stay quiet. So they get away with it. And the police would know that. He said a no sitting judge would ever sign a court order taking somebody's freedom of speech away. Because they'd write their own arrest warrant for breaking constitutional laws. He was only bullying you. The only thing legal he did on that whole phone call was list you informant with money and immunity. And as far as FBI, they can never drop you. They'll go to jail for dropping you. He said they can put you in another witness protection program, but they have to speak to you first. And of course, they have to pay you all that money from before and the rest of your life. And they and you have to stay an informant and it, it, or they have to put you in another witness protection program. They can never let you go. Because once the government agrees to protect you, they have to protect you. See, he opened a real case for his statements. Had a cop talk to Dave. Police officers in uniform admit to uh, working Karen around the house. See, I was never weird with myself. It's a shower scene. Where March 2nd to the 3rd, they said, they put two clips together, put her in a porn. It's not her, it's them. And then March 13th, they're so altered, their tapes. <clears throat> so altered. So altered that March 13, 21, they told the nurse at Altman Hospital the only thing they had you on was adjusting yourself. The guy said, that's sick. She said, no, she just wiped off some water with clothes on. They didn't have anything else. He said, that's sick. She said, no, she just brushed it off. It's actually really funny. They didn't have anything else. Then they said, you touched yourself, you exposed yourself, you touched yourself, look weird. Is that wiping off water with clothes on? No. That's being naked looking weird. It's like that never happened. You put my head on somebody else's body. And then you got, they're playing with me. They're playing. So what would you be doing? If you touch yourself, you expose yourself, you're undressing. You touch yourself, it looks weird, but you're not weird. You'd be putting yeast infection cream on. Or got undressing out in the shower and you're washing. Because you have to wash or you smell like a wet diaper. I mean, think about it. How bad you smell. It's like it's washing. Right? I go outside to smoke. She figured out what they did. It's a shower scene in the other room. Some guy in January of 19, one of the guys in the case, came up and said, uh, we found out they photoshopped using a feminine wipey above the toilet in another room. Before. I thought, what before? And you're weird. That would make you look weird. From where I had them infected, I was infected. And I would go to the bathroom. You'd have to wipe off the excess old cream and then put new on. That would make you look weird. Photoshop that in the other room. Sheriff David, he, um, 
He lives a couple hours away. He said, it's your local police law. He said they should have arrested that agent, that retired judge, the first day. They can't do any of this. He can't talk to you like that, and you should have been put in a safe house. He said he can't talk to you that way, and they can't do any of this. Your local police could have arrested him. Are they slow? He said, and as far as technology, and it's been for years, you can, everything's digital. They can change rooms. They can click and paste you somewhere else. And he said, they can even go over your words. They can take words out of sentences, make a whole new sentence, and tape it over so it's a new video. He said, everything's digital. I said, well, I had bruises, throwing up, headache, heart racing. They said they were drugging me up and telling me to say stuff, and I didn't talk to anybody. He said, it's your local police law. Those amnesia drugs are horrible. I talked to another sheriff about those amnesia drugs. He said those are so bad, they could have drugged up the people and told them to take down the towers, and they don't know they killed everyone. My co-worker, Dar, uh, she had a set of twins. Uh, one had died, and her friends talked her into going out to get out because she'd been grieving really hard. Um, get a babysitter for the other twin. She sits down, she takes a drink, Starts acting happy. A group of people come up. Start talking to her. She's nice as she can be to her. She eventually leaves with him. She found herself in a puddle of pee. She's throwing up. Headache. Dizzy the next day. Two months later. She went to the doctor. And they told her she was pregnant. She's like how can I be pregnant? I've not had sex. They had raped her. And left her in a puddle of pee. She didn't even know who she left with. She never even remember talking to her. My neighbor, Mike, came up to me. I walked out of my apartment. I got a problem. I don't know how I got home. I'm like, let's sleep it off. He's like, you don't understand. I've been sitting there for hours. I don't know how I got home. I'm like, go sleep it off. He's like, I got a worse problem. I got $80 in my pocket. I'm like, check your bank. And he took 100 out. He said, what was in the box with mustard? And how did I change my shoes? I'm like, go sleep it off. I'm like, oh my God, they roofied him. He drove around high all night. He told me he was a New York cop. I'd like, go sleep it off. Okay? He went back down to that bar. He told everybody in the middle of a second beer that he was an, an astronaut, nice to some people, laughing at him, and swore at other ones. Left and drove around high all night. Took himself out to eat, talked himself out to the bank, came home, apparently went in and changed his shoes and sat back down and didn't know how he got out of the bar. You're sleepwalking. They call them date rape drugs or amnesia drugs. You're sleepwalking for four to six hours. I've talked to other police departments or police officers about it. You are sleepwalking. That's what they did to me. They're fake sodium pentothal reports. You're sleepwalking. No, do I think those agents are funny laughing at me? Do I think it's funny that the Vegas would even want sympathy over Phil killing their kid 20 years ago? 20 years ago. Now, if somebody tampers with your brakes, you hit the uh, brake, your brake lights will still come on, right? Even if they don't work. Okay, because Brian Laney came over and told us that we're all at home, that there was church people behind him. They were going to a church baseball game. He didn't even try to stop them. He blew right, showing he was rich, and he was showing off in front of people. Blew right through that stop sign, right into a semi and killed him and Tyler. Phil did. Her dad killed her son. If he would have lived, he would have went to jail for a vehicular homicide, showing off. He didn't even try to stop. Everybody's like, he didn't even try just got them right into that semi. Showing off. Killed them both. He would If he would have lived, he would have went to jail for that child's murder. Now, them wanting sympathy over that, that's shame. That is shame that her father did that, showing off. Do you know nine years later, they're so mentally ill and they want people to feel sorry for them. It's sick. He's up on Blaylock's pulpit. I hate God for taking the thing I love the most, not to me and my other children. God didn't take him. His father-in-law did. Showing off. 
He'd been in jail for that kid's murder if he would have lived. God didn't take him. And he wanted everybody to feel sorry for him nine months later. You know why? Because you control people. And then 15 years later, he hires a bunch of people to kill me because Strange lied on me. Strange only made up that lie. Well, not only did I stand up for Brian with that incident for him and Brandy when they were teenagers. You know, shun people because some teenagers go off and have sex. Unfortunately, 17-year-olds do that. You don't shun people for that. Seriously, 17-year-olds make mistakes. No one's to talk to him. No one's to look at him. He shows up at my church. It's like he's a little kid. You know what I mean? And then my sister, he's so two-faced. He was letting his own son commit adultery with Katie. And my sister Linda's married to him. And she was following him, came up and said, I think they thought it was you. And then all of a sudden, they, he started telling people, she was faking, she was sick. And faking, she got well. I had to work nine months to get well. And it was a medication error. And I swelled up like a balloon and almost died. And it took nine months for all that swelling to leave and everything start working and me to work out to get my muscles strong enough that I could walk right. Now, do and it was two months later I finally got well. Do I think it's funny that he made that up and I lived through that hell? No. And back then, the doctors told Dave and I it was uh, medical malpractice. They were ripping you and your insurance company off, keeping you sick, keeping you coming back, and then sharing you with their friends. You need to sue them. Now they call it a medication error they should have caught. Now, do I think it's funny? Because after I had all the surgeries, my muscles locked tight. And then, you know, I told you how before how I swelled up like a balloon and everything quit working. I ended up even with brain swelling. And it, my heart got off. My thyroid stopped working. My adrenal gland stopped working. Swelled up like a balloon. My legs are popping out of place from the mass of swelling. I'm dying from doctors giving me the wrong meds to rip off my insurance company, keeping me coming back. And I almost died. Then they finally sat me down and told me what they were doing. They're getting kicked back from the drug companies falsely diagnosing you. Now, and then you stopped going to them. I got with Dr. Eli, got me on fentanyl patches, muscle relaxers, got me out moving. I was in so much pain trying to get those muscles to unlock that I'd end up in the emergency room. And Dr. Eli was like, just make her comfortable. She's got to move those muscles and to get the blood flow back into them. And then she'll be okay. He was right. And it took me nine months of working out. Two months later, I got well. He only made it up so Dave could cheat. Found out later, right before the case, they said he was making it up to the church women. I said, you better not be making nothing up to no church women. And someone said he was supposed to take the single church women out to teach you a lesson. He, they opened our marriage. Why do they have long skirts? Why do they have long hair? They're committing adultery openly. They hired assassins. They lie. They bear false witness. Accessory to murder. Hmm? Human trafficking. Why have long hair and long skirts? Because it's an occult. Like Jim Jones, David Crash, Charles Manson. It's an occult. They don't worship God. They worship their selves. They did, strange lied on everybody from Dave White, that he blasted God, tried to kill himself, he just switched churches, he lied on Ron himself, told him everybody was cheating with Connie, they lied on Heather that she was cheating, they lied on all kinds of people, and I'll tell you what, if they would go to the other apostolic churches and say, whoever, who went to Strange's church before they raised their hands, were they ever mean to you, or did they ever lie on you, why do you think we're here? They vandalized people's properties, they threatened other people's lives before, they're in a call. See, that's where those people said those agents need to go to jail for at least obstruction. And see, that agent, him, that Will and John, stole $290,000, let them sell an FBI case, made millions of it. Do you know who, who gave them the passcode? They had to. Let them sell technology, listening through my car, my phone. They're raking money out of victimizing victims they're that dirty see that's what they said uh in january that that agent is actually that corrupt 
and how dirty well it really is. I was in Walmart 62. Men walk up to me. Remember the truth. They'll try to implant lies. They'll try to steal everything you have in life. This is an extortion plan. Okay? The agent is so corrupt. He'll try to steal the settlement. He'll try to steal your money. He's actually that corrupt. And walked off and warned me. They called him a paid off dirty agent in February or March of 19. In uh, the mall. He's actually that dirty. He's stealing for money that was meant for victims that got them information and they were supposed to take care of them the rest of your life. Do you know that's where my friend from the prosecutor's office, they can never legally drop you and of course they have to pay you. Huh? I found out that that agent was telling everyone no one was to help me at all. Where he said he was going to protect me, he lied. He just opened the case to steal from the federal government. He's nothing but a fucking thief. An embezzler of government funds stealing from victims. Setting them up and then just leaving them there for uh, occult and drug dealers to run wild. And human traffickers to abuse people. And he's an accessory to human trafficking. Is he getting a kickback from all the kids they're stealing? Hmm? Makes you wonder because he didn't stop them either. And like those people said, we know the sheriffs and marshals used that case to get 800 people. It was that big a case. It went nationwide. Oh, and by the way, they sold the log in nationwide where they made fun of the FBI they dared them to fix it July 9th 23 they went and dare fix this after what one other agent said they even dared them so vicious mocking them they're talking about it clear up in Fairlawn nobody ever say a word we all seen where they made fun of them they also seen where they dare them these people are that arrogant I'm gonna upload this